Googled. Today we have Google with us. We're going to be talking about exporting. So Dee is here and Pippa from Google, and they've got a special guest from Optimal Workshop. Nathan is here as well. And so we're going to have, it's going to be a really enriched session with lots of good information and a little bit of customer experience and understanding what it's like to be on that side of the coin. So I am really looking forward to this session. As with all of the sessions we've done with Google, they've been excellent and we've gotten so much value out of them here for our digital boosters. So welcome, welcome. We are out on many platforms. You might be watching on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, or you could be here with us on Zoom. And you can participate in this session by using the comments section, the chat features, or the Q&A features, depending on what platform you're streaming from. I'll be checking all of those functions throughout the session to get your questions answered by the experts, which is really cool. So make this session bespoke to you and your business. Get your questions answered by the experts. That's why they're here, right? So um, that is a little bit from me. Uh, Welcome, Dee, Pippa, Nathan. We've got a full lineup today. We've got everyone's here today. <laughs> a great way to start a Tuesday, I'd say. Thank you so much, Anamari. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today uh, for our Export with Google session. Uh, so my name is Dee, and I'm an agency lead here at Google um, in New Zealand. And I've been working here to support the small businesses of New Zealand uh, for a little over three years now. Um, so the session we'll be running today is all about understanding, identifying the export opportunities for your business and really building the confidence you need as a business owner to take that big step to launch internationally. Uh, the session today will consist of um, two parts. Uh, so firstly, we're going to be talking to a business known as Optimal Workshop about their journey and how they've identified the opportunity to ex export into the US market. Um, I'm also going to be joined by my colleague, Pippa, who's here over here. Hi. <laughs> who will take you through an awesome free tool called Market Finder. And that's really to help you get started in scoping that next opportunity for your business. So we'll kick off with the fireside chat with Nathan, um, who's here on the call now. But before we do, uh, just a reminder, if you have any questions throughout the session, uh, feel free to pop them in the chat and we'll address them um, towards the end. So Nathan, how are you? How's everything going? I'm doing great, thanks. Um, good to be here today. Um, just got back from a week down south in Wanaka in the snow, so I'm feeling fully rested and recharged, um, which is great. And yeah, looking forward to having a little chat today. Amazing. That would have been a nice, um, nice deserved break, especially um, down in Wanaka. Uh, tell me about Optimal Workshop. So where did the business first start? Sure. Um, so just for a bit of context for people, um, I'm head of marketing here at Optimal Workshop. So um, I guess that gives you a bit of insight into where I'm going to be coming from, from a lot of the answers to these questions. But um, in terms of where we started, um, it, back in 2004, there was a group of um, three sort of consultants operating in the UX design space. And um, they did a lot of work at the time um, offering their services to various businesses here in New Zealand and naturally in Australia. In fact, um, Hell Pizza were one of their first clients here and they helped create the website and the architecture for, for those guys there. So it was mainly focused in that information architecture space as a consultancy. So um, taxonomy, labeling, content, how we structure and um, websites and, and so on. Um, and actually, as part of that, they realized there was no useful tools or um, there was no tools that could enable them to do that work and quickly at scale remotely. And so they decided to build the tools <laughs> themselves. And, and that was three years later. And in 2007, Optimal Workshop was kind of born um, with our first two flagship tools, which were a card sorting tool and a tree testing tool. Incredible. Um, so when did you first really start thinking about opportunities in other countries? Um, so whilst we started here in New Zealand, and that was kind of the first point of call, um, what we found is um, just through our networks and connections is that the maturity of UX in New Zealand wasn't, <laughs> wasn't massive at the time. Um, and when I say UX for, for people, I realize I throw that term around because I'm immersed in that environment when I'm talking about user experience, of course. Um, 
the maturity here was quite low. So um, we sort of initially, uh, after launching here in New Zealand, which obviously meant some scope and growth into Australia, we we looked to the US market because that was where maturity was a lot higher in the user experience space and design was a lot more mature over there as a practice as well. And so, you know, it was quite early on that we started thinking about about the overseas markets. And that's just because it made sense um, from a business perspective to, to go into those bigger markets first. And um, well, really double down on those bigger markets. Um, yeah. Yeah, nice. Um, it is, it, it does take a bit of, um, I guess, a startup or a ramp up phase to really kind of understand what you're dealing with in one market and a small market being New Zealand to really then say, okay, what next? Or where is where is the demand for my products next? So that's incredible to hear. Um, let's fast forward to today. And so you're now operating in the UK and the US markets. Um, what has that journey been like? Uh, challenging, <laughs> um, particularly recently. But I think, you know, we've been around yesterday was actually our 14th year anniversary which wow. <laughs> um I found out and um, today so you know year on year growth's been great and things have been going in the right direction and but we we relied a lot on word of mouth and and that organic space initially and and we used to spend a lot of time overseas in those markets so and sponsoring conferences speaking to and, you know, being on the ground at those places, talking to customers, talking to prospects and, and so on and so forth. And obviously with COVID, that's a lot more challenging um, mm -hmm. these days. And um, so one day maybe we'll be able to do that again. But um, I guess also lots of copycats have come along and digital transformation is, is real, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it's easier to build software these days. And, and UX has become quite popular. Um, so markets become quite saturated. So, you know, I think, as I said, it's been challenging, but um, we've and we've had to adapt with everything that's going on. And also, um, one of our competitors is is good old Post-it notes and a, and a sharpie. So <laughs> there's also that that side of things as well. Um, but it's been fun as well. You know, there's been a lot of scope to experiment, try new things and speak to customers in different markets, understand what makes them tick. And, and that's been really great. Um, you know, and we've had some big wins too. Um, some big enterprise customers um, in those markets. And, and, you know, we've always focused on that sort of land and expand sort of approach. And, and, and yeah, that's, that's sort of um, been good we've served those small businesses and they've grown into big customers of ours which is great um and i guess that comes again with its challenges of growth is um where do you focus on that smaller business in turning them into bigger bigger customers or do you go for the bigger bigger um enterprises and and focus just on that market so yeah lots of challenges but it's been a great journey and and things are going really well so yeah that's awesome. Uh, yeah, no, I, I can see, especially with, with the likes of COVID, it hasn't all really been smooth sailing for a lot of businesses and a lot of small businesses, especially. Um, in setting up and building a presence in such a large market, what other challenges did you really face in that process? And how did you really navigate through those challenges as well? Yeah, I'm, um, I guess, as I said, we were quite we were lucky in the sense that we did have some good networks and connections um, in those markets. So um, we was really able to leverage the industry and, and anyone that works in the UX or design industry will know that um, it's quite a tight knit community. Everyone's sort of willing to help out. So I guess, um, yeah, I mean, it was challenging, but I think, you know, we just had to lean on our networks and, um, yeah, word of mouth was so key. And um, so again, it was building those relationships um, and really just honing in on exactly what our unique proposition was and, and just doubling down on that. I think like they, they were they were how we got around those challenges, if you like. We started quite small and niche and, and just build a community around that. And then that's, that's where we saw our first sort of initial growth um, come from. Yeah, awesome. I can uh, yeah, definitely understand the relationship um, aspect of any you know business is so so important and sort of even you know attracting customers or equally retaining customers as well so well done I think on on um, I guess really establishing your business and I and and, and exporting it overseas um, changing tech a little bit 
what were some of the tools or resources that Optimal Workshop used to really identify that overseas opportunity? Yeah, so um, we, we were quite lucky in the sense that um, NZTE, um, New Zealand Trade of Enterprise, we have good partnership with those. So we managed to lean into those guys as an advisory sort of aspect. And they've supported a lot of our um, senior leaders here as well in various, various ways. Um, we also, you know, they provide a lot of learning opportunity as well. So um, they run various courses and... Um, and whatnot, which um, around yeah, lead generation, um, just to name one example recently, um, and we found those really helpful as well. Um, leaning into your guys' space, um, Google Trends has always been a quite interesting one to, to look at, and not heaps of data in, in such a niche industry, but it's been interesting to see um, user experience is a classic example, as I alluded to, the popularity of that rise um, throughout the time. Um, Keyword planner in Google ads and myself being a marketer and coming from that digital performance space initially has, has always been super helpful to, you know, actually go, okay, here's, here's our value proposition and mm. here's the market we want to serve. Here's some keywords that are getting this amount of volume. Here's the cost. And, and just that actually helps. And um, obviously having your go-to-market strategy is really important, but that actually helps and um, us go well actually this sort of market or this this term or this word or that this specific um group of terms and um, we should actually be positioning ourselves a little bit like that because there's a lot more opportunity there to sort of own that space so um that was that was a big tool and a big help and as i said industry connections networks that they're, they're really helpful and building a community has been massive for us and um, and then there's a bunch of other tools as well sort of and um, SEMrush is one tool for competitor analysis. Again, I'm, I'm definitely leaning into the marketing heavy tools here, but um, yeah, there's there's lots lots of tools out there that I guess we've dabbled in over over time um, to support yeah. us. No, that's um yeah no that's a that's a good sort of list of of tools to kind of get started with. Um, and we'll be talking about a few more later today as well later in the session as well. Um, interesting around the keyword planner, I think. Uh, you were spot on in sort of referencing there are cultural nuances in every single market that really need to be understood um, and thinking about what your business means or what words are used in, in different markets is so, so important to really attract that demand um, and get that right in the first instance. So that's, it's very cool. That was um, well, well utilized tool. Keyword yeah. And um, that's, that's really a good point actually. And, and I think, um, I may have mentioned this previously to you, Dee, but like, um, for instance, in our case, information architecture is a thing mm. used in the U S interestingly, not as well used in the UK. And that was something that we kind of, you know, and not necessarily speaking to people, but actually through some of that keyword research and whatnot. And it's like, okay, so we have to position ourselves slightly different just for that cultural um, differentiation of, of uh, talk, they're talking about the same thing, but mm -hmm. um, actually um, using different term to explain it. So, and um, yeah, it was, that was super helpful. And, and it's, it's something that's easy to forget as well. Yeah. Um, especially when you're trying to service global markets. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure, yeah, huge input into your marketing strategy when you're looking at exporting into a specific market as well. Um, cool. So what, at what point did Optimal Workshop really feel confident in making that leap into, into a new market or to just launch internationally? What point or was there a sort of pivotal point that occurred for the business? Um, I think as I alluded to earlier, um, it was, it was kind of that maturity piece. So mm. I think it was pretty early on. We just kind of knew that um, it's, it's got to, we just got to take that leap and, you know, things were going well here. And I guess to a point we hadn't saturated the local market, but we kind of felt at a point where it's like, well, if we really want to test this thing or, or make an impact, then we've got to go um, into the markets that are more mature and, and align better with, with where we want to get. And that's, that's what we did. And, and that's where most of our growth came from after that initial launch here in New Zealand and Australia. And the U S was, was the made logical sense. I guess it's, it was the biggest market, as I said, the most mature and um, English speaking market. So, um, yeah, that, that's kind of what we went for. Um, I guess naturally that meant growth came from the UK. And the, the other thing that sort of, I guess, was in the back of our minds as we launched in the U S was, um, there's a lot of multinational corporates there. And um, 
again, with a focus on sort of customer experience, user experience. So naturally that's helped us to grow into like the UK markets and other European markets as well. Um, just because by virtue of, 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 I guess, being used by people in those bigger companies, they naturally have offices distributed globally. So um, yeah, that was kind of just a, a byproduct of our success of deciding to go into the US, I guess. Yeah. No, that's that's um that's awesome to hear. I think uh, definitely that sort of just taking the leap um, and um, having a bit of a test and learn approach um, when first entering a market is definitely the right kind of way to to start thinking about it or just to kind of start really testing to see what the demand or what the opportunity is. Um, so it's great to see that you guys um, found success in doing that as well. Um, so lucky last question, if you were to share one piece of advice to a small business that might be on this call today um, that is keen to export their business, what would it be? Um, I think there's a few things from my perspective. It's having a real clear um, a real clear um, understanding of, of your value proposition and, and what makes you unique. Um, as I said, the, the market's so saturated these days and knowing what makes you stand out is, is really important. And, and from that comes um, having a real good understanding of, of who you're going for um, customer-wise, like what is your ideal customer? Um, because it's, it's easy to say, oh, we're for everyone, but actually, again, in this, in this time, um, being more being more focused um, is is definitely really important early on. And I guess the third thing is, um, think about your long term strategy. Like it, it's cool to, um, one sort of I guess mantra is 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 go slow to go fast is something I like to follow. And that's that sort of thinking, balancing um, tactical things that you can do now to to grow and and test new things and and see what works versus your longer term strategic goals where you want to head, um, and what you want to say achieve in that sort of three to five year window is really cool and then i also say data and hard facts you know use them to your advantage and there's so much available these days <laughs> but also be be crazy be creative come up with some hypotheses and and just evolve that over time i think it's it's all about finding that balance in that space so and um, yeah value prop your customer and your target and then yeah just thinking about that that longer term vision and, and balancing and short term versus long term and um, is pretty key awesome those are three great pieces of advice so thank you thank you so much for sharing that nathan um i'll just pass over to we'll just shout out to anna mari is there any hello <laughs> <laughs> hey, this has been great. It's great to hear your story, Nathan. Like lots of ingenuity there as well. And just like being able to roll with the punches, I think is really good. And as a former language teacher, I um, always am really conscious of the language that I use. And I think it's sort of really important that point of using the proper language when you're approaching a new market is really great insight and a good reminder. Um, so I, I just loved that comment there. And would you like me to share my screen, Dee, so that you can, and you just, if you just tell me when to click, I will. Perfect. That would be great. Um, let's jump into it. And I'll pass over to Pippa now to, to run cool. through the section. Yay, Pippa. Okay. No. Seamless. Let, let me see if I can do this now. Let's see. <laughs> let's hope mine works. <laughs> Hopefully my screen isn't too much of a craziness. Can you see? Oh, nope. Hold on. I think that was me, wasn't it? <laughs> Could you see it before there? Hold on one sec. Let me close that down. I've got so many tabs open. My apologies, guys. Um, totally fine. Share. Okay. There. Okay. We should be good now. Can you see that now? Um, yep. Just give us one second. Okay. Awesome. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this section of the workshop, which is going global with Google's Market Finder tool. As Dee mentioned, my name is Pippa. I'm also a Kiwi, and I've been at Google for about two and a half years now, working with small to medium-sized businesses to grow them both locally and internationally. So let's get started diving in a little bit more about Google's Market Finder. So just jump to the next slide, please. Oh, maybe not. Oh, yes. This section okay. of the workshop, we'll be discussing the benefits of exporting, 
how Google's Market Finder tool works, including how it can help you explore new markets, plan operations, and advertise your business to a global audience. And we'll finish with a recap and some additional resources. As Dee mentioned, please pop all questions in the chat and we'll be answering them all at the end. So next slide, please. Firstly, let's go through some of the reasons to consider exporting. Today, nearly 5 billion people are online around the globe. And these means opportunities to find and engage with new customers are limitless. What's more, customers aren't concerned as you might think they are about where a business is based, as long as they're happy with the product or service that they're receiving. For example, one survey found that 96% of people didn't know that booking.com is from the Netherlands. And of those, 90% said that the, that fact wouldn't actually affect whether or not they use that service again. With an online business, you naturally have the ability to expand globally and it's quicker and easier than ever. Next slide, please. So there are many benefits to exporting and a couple of standouts are that global markets can open up access to resources such as a new base of customers or advantages over your domestic competitors. Next slide. You may also get access to a multinational talent pool as well as local government incentives for businesses investing in certain countries. Next slide, please. It no longer takes years for a business to go global either. If you're a small company in an unusual sector, like what we heard about before, don't be put off. Two out of five companies with fewer than 10 employees are already doing business in at least one high growth market. Companies like Spotify, Netflix, Uber, Airbnb, and Tinder all took the same first steps as you. And selling overseas can help your business in a variety of different ways. So that's including increasing profits and competitiveness, as well as sparking innovation. Selling globally can boost your business profile as well, and that's both at home and abroad. And as you expand into new markets, you create a larger commercial footprint. The image on the screen at the moment on the left shows how a manufacturer, a distributor and a buyer can all be located in different parts of the globe. And this is actually a lot more like common than you'd probably think. Next slide, please. So some questions to consider are like, would your business benefit by exporting? Secondly, like what products or what services do you offer that could be exported as well? And for people that have never done it before on the chat today, like if you do have any questions, quick plug again, please pop them in the chat. <laughs> so flicking through to Market Finder, thank you for changing the slide. You probably have a lot of questions about selling globally. And Google offers a free tool called Market Finder that can help answer many of those questions. Next slide, please. Market Finder uses details from your business website to recommend markets where consumers are likely to buy your products based on search data and search trends that we're seeing. Then you can use it to get insight into the recommended markets, which can help you to create a marketing strategy to reach customers in those new target locations. The tool also offers advice on operations, such as taking payments in new markets, as well as shipping advice, customs, licenses, and legal considerations as well. Next slide, please. So once you've decided to export, there are three major steps. Firstly, you have to determine where is the best market for your business. A recent Google business survey found that about 70% of SMEs said that they lacked the skills needed to find the best overseas markets to enter. Next slide, please. Next, you'll need to plan your operations. And if you're like 61% of exporters, you'd like some specific knowledge and support about how to do that. Next slide, please. And then finally, you'll need a solid marketing strategy to help you scale your brand and expand across borders. So we're going to be going through all three of these steps as through the Market Finder tool that can help you to succeed in each. We'll be using the example of a business called Strider Sports, who used a lot of digital tools to support their export plan. 
in this specific section, we'll be using them as the example. So sorry, next slide. Awesome. So let's get familiar with Market Finder. If you guys could all open a new tab, you'll be able to follow along uh, as I walk you guys through this tool. The URL is g.co forward slash market finder. Um, and I'll give you all just a hot sec to open that up. Uh, so we're going to be running through a brief demo of how to use the tool. And as you can see, this screenshot that we've got up on the slide at the moment, this is what it looks like when you go to that link. So if everyone's opened that, click on the take your business to new markets and the large blue button underneath that that says get started. Next slide, please. Once you've clicked through, you'll see the discover new markets page. So just scroll down and that's the blue button there. Awesome. So once you've navigated, sorry, next slide. Thank you. Once you've navigated to Market Finder, type in the web address for your business. So here you can see https forward slash stridebikes.com and then the blue button next to that, which says continue. So Market Finder searches for and analyzes the details from your own website to recommend the best markets for you to consider. So after you've added the business web address, underneath that, get started, and it should take you through to this screen here. Awesome, thank you. So take a look at the categories that it's come up with. They reflect the information based on popular online searches and the content of your website, and it's using that information to lead you to potential markets for your business. You can see that it comes up with different nodes of categorization, and you can remove ones, or you can also use the search bar there to add new ones as well, if you think it may have missed any. So when you're ready to move on and you've made those adjustments, confirm the categories, and then you can click next. Next slide, please, thank you. Next, Market Finder will ask where you are interested in expanding your business to. Is that within the US or is it globally? So if you click globally, it'll be able to take you through to any market recommended outside of the US as well. So next slide, please. Thank you. Sorry, just back one. Thanks. Here, you'll see a list of suggested markets that would be relevant as an export option for your business. So in this screenshot here, the markets of Germany, the United Kingdom and France have all been recommended for Strider Bikes. If you hover over each market, it brings up a caption with additional information about the criteria and the reasons behind the data, including like how many monthly searches occur for the products and the services in the categories there, um, as well as how many advertisers, or sorry, on average, how much advertisers are paying for a cost per click if they're using Google Ads, as well as how friendly the market is to expanding businesses and how likely consumers in that market are to have disposable income to spend on additional products and services that you could be offering. Next slide, please. Awesome, so if you click next, at this point, you'll connect your Google account to go into Market Finder. So the image on the slide shows the complete your profile and the box has been filled out, well here it has been, with Strider Executive and the URL striderbikes.com. And the big blue button says sign up with Google. This will mean that you have the option to receive relevant updates and other information from Google about events and research that can potentially help you to continue to grow your business. And then after you've completed and reviewed everything, or if you don't want to, you can just click no and continue as a guest, um, click get started, and then we'll be able to go through to the next bit. So next slide, please. Awesome. So here you'll be able to take a closer look at the expanded list of the suggested markets that Market Finder mentioned before. So on the screen here, there's the, the suggestions of Germany, United Kingdom, and France. And you can create a short list of those markets as well. And this will make it easier to compare your top choices. So from now on, the content you see in the operations and marketing sections of Market Finder will be tailored to suit the markets that you've added to that short list. I'll just give you guys a hot sec to do that. 
Awesome. So now you can dive deeper into those potential markets that you've selected. Clicking on the country profile gives you access to info such as population, languages spoken, age, demographics, currency as well, all compared to the US so that you can quickly see how these new customers are both alike and different. On this slide, the country profile is selected, which reveals information on the population side of the United States, as well as the three recommended markets. And sorry, I should have caveated before, Strider Bikes is a US, com um, a US company, and that's why we're comparing it to the United States market. <laughs> so just the next slide, please. Uh, back one. Awesome. So here you can click on economic profile to get a whole host of information such as GDP, GDP per capita, GDP purchasing power per capita, annual growth, as well as more specific household stats such as like household net income, um, the unemployment rates, popular payment methods as well. And again, we're looking at US data provided in comparison to the markets that they're considering exporting to. So this image here is the economics profile page and you can click through the different markets as well um, on using the pane on the left-hand side. Next slide, please. Next, you can see what online behavior is like in these markets. So what percentage of the population uses the internet? How many total internet searches are there per month? Uh, are there more Android users than iOS users? And here you can also see the recommended bid for Google Ads. That number is an indication of like the average cost per click for related keywords in your chosen categories that we selected at the start. So a low CPC or cost per click, sorry, means that there's a lower number of bidders and slightly less competition in that market. So on this slide here, the online profile is highlighted, which reveals a bar graph comparing the monthly searches across the categories in the home market, United States, Germany, the United Kingdom, and France. Next slide, please. Since you'd likely be doing business with consumers in this market online versus a brick and mortar storefront, so we're talking about more of an e-com focus, you'll want to know how they use the internet to purchase product and services. And that information is found under the purchase behavior column, which is highlighted on this slide. And it tells you information such as what devices people use to research products before they buy. For instance, is that a desktop? Is it a mobile phone? Is it a tablet? And what that looks like in those specific markets. Did they use the internet to compare prices or did they uh, like read online reviews or did they just get background information before making offline purchases? Another key piece of information here is what percentage of the population makes online purchases weekly? And that'll be critical information for you making decisions on export opportunities. Next slide, please. Awesome. Finally, you'll get lots of insights into the logistics of selling in these markets. This will give you an idea of the costs that you might incur and the time it might take to deal with these regulatory issues, compliance, customs, transit, all those things associated with doing business across borders. Once again, you'll see here, we've got that comparison market of the US and how those, configure, how those figures compare to the new potential markets that Strata Bikes had selected. So on this slide, you can see this is the logistics tab, which is highlighted at the top, which reveals a comparison of trading across borders rank data. Next slide, please. So now that you've identified a few potential targets for export, let's look at what else Market Finder can do to help you with the operations planning involved in expanding into new markets. Next slide, please. There's a lot to consider when expanding into new global markets from taxes to currency to customer care. And this is an exciting time, but planning is also really key to success. So this slide shows the considerations for expanding operations, localization, global payments, customer care, logistics, talent recruitment, as well as tax and legal. So there is a lot. <laughs> Next slide, please. 
but Market Finder can guide you through many of these operational areas you'll need to consider, tailoring the content to match your shortlisted markets. So if you click on operational areas, which is highlighted in this slide, it's one of the tabs at the top to access these insights. And in the next couple of slides, we'll take a closer look at a couple of the topics you can find under there. Next slide, please. Localization is one thing that you'll want to keep in mind as you export to make sure that your products fit like the language, fit the culture and the customs of your target countries. You also need to know what are the payment channels that are most commonly used in your new market so that you can successfully manage like your global payment systems. Different countries actually prefer different payment platforms. Next slide, please. Customer care is another major consideration. You might even consider working with local customer care agents who really understand customer needs in the new local market. You might also need a scalable CRM or customer relationship management system to successfully manage that localized segment of customer care. Logistics also get more complex once you start exporting. So creating a really cohesive plan on how to get your goods into customers' hands effectively, uh, as well as, you know, relatively quickly, and as well as how to handle returns is critical. Again, you could probably consider working with like a local logistics company who can help you to navigate the regulations, the transportation, the requirements and the returns as well for your business. Next slide, please. You also need to consider recruiting talent in your new market, potentially. Having local experts on your payroll will help your products sell better as well as improving your profitability. Local talent can help you scale because they understand how businesses operate in that country, as well as the right approach to take with your customers. Finally, from this perspective, taking care to get informed about taxes, fees, customs and regulations is so essential because you don't want to get stung with you know, unknowing costs, which will reduce your profitability in a new market. Obviously, these can vary by country and mistakes can lead to really high fees and potentially even legal action. So this is a really key step. There are lots of articles, case studies, as well as guides in this section of Market Finder to help you to dive deeper into all of these operations and planning topics. Next slide, please. So some questions to consider here are, what operations topics are you most concerned about as a part of your expansion? And definitely addressing those as a priority. And then also just leveraging Market Finder to help you to understand what's best gonna help you to answer those questions, potentially going elsewhere if it's not gonna be the best tool for you. So in the interest of time, next slide, please. Lastly, how you'll market your business and scale your brand across borders is another important consideration as you plan your expansion. In this next section, we'll be looking through uh, how to understand how you can support and build your brand and marketing strategy across borders. Next slide, please. A solid marketing plan has a strategy and an understanding of how to measure performance. When you're expanding globally, Trusted partners can be key to getting the most out of your marketing and your advertising plans. The slide here shows the considerations for a global marketing strategy, which is performance and measurement, advertising, and finding a local trusted partner as well. Next slide, please. Within Market Finder, you can click one of the tabs at the top, which is Market Your Business, which is highlighted on this slide. This will give you access to tools, guides, and resources to help you market your business globally. And let's deep dive into a couple of their specific offerings. Next slide, thank you. A global marketing strategy, or a GMS, is a strategy that encompasses countries from several different regions in the world and aims to coordinate a company's marketing efforts in these countries. You can learn how other companies have done this by reading case studies available on Market Finder. But it's important to highlight that the most creative marketing strategy can be kind of useless if you can't measure how well it's working and what it's driving for your business. You can explore tutorials on how to use Google tools and other resources 
for example, Google Analytics, to analyze your performance as well as your results. Next slide, please. There are three types of advertising that can play a big role in your global expansion, and that's search, display, and video. Market Finder has detailed guides on how to create successful campaigns in all three of these mediums to best suit your marketing objectives. Finally, the same with operations actually, marketing your business across the globe may go more smoothly with partners who have experience, expertise, potentially know the local language in these global markets you're potentially expanding to. You can find agencies who've completed all international growth program trainings, as well as met preset customer objectives on Market Finder. Next slide, thank you. I know that we have covered a lot of content today, um, but we've basically just scratched the surface on a couple of basic steps for getting started with exporting, including how to choose a market, planning your operations, and scaling your branding and marketing. So what's next? What other resources do we have? Next slide, please. Expanding your business and looking towards exporting in other countries or even considering expanding your business in other areas outside of New Zealand is a huge step. But to recap, business is becoming increasingly global, even for small businesses. And, you know, if you're not doing business in other markets, you could potentially be losing out compared to your competitors as well. Um, or, it's, you know, it's potentially something they're considering as well. So taking a couple of steps today, taking some time to familiarize yourself with the Market Finder tool will only bring benefits. Um, on the screen here, you can see it's g.co forward slash Market Finder, and it's a completely free tool. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is also, sorry, just another overview of what I just said. Next slide again. Thank you. <laughs> So if you want to sharpen your business and marketing skills, you can check out a lot of free resources that we have outside of export on the Our Grow with Google Hub. Uh, if you go to the next slide again, thank you. It's g.co forward slash grow on air for all digital virtual skills workshops, as well as their descriptions if you had anything else. In the interests of time, I know that we are pretty much, we're over time essentially for this section actually. We'd love to spend some time answering your questions specifically. Um, so sorry, if you go to the next slide, that will be up there. And yeah, we'd love to open it up to the floor for anything that's come through. Oh, okay. I've just jumped on because I, I can't see the chat actually when um, <laughs> when I'm in full screen, I've noticed now. Oh, wow. That was so amazing. Um, For those of you tuning in on the different platforms, I'm actually going to go to those links and I will pop them in the comments section um, uh, below what we're doing. Uh, depending on what platform you're on on YouTube, I'll pop it actually in the top description. I'm just going to jump, give everybody a moment to type if they have questions. Um, and I'm going to jump from platform to platform to see what we've got going on out there. So, um, yeah, where am I? <laughs> there we go. Okay. So that was fantastic, by the way. Um, I am really impressed with how many um, how many options there are. There's so much data. So it says, thank you so much for using easy language to explain such as com on complex topics. Yes, I totally agree. Um, there... There's just so much when you're talking about global markets, but what I think is really exciting is that we've got tools like this that can help to simplify it for us. And we're really grateful for this walkthrough as well. Um, and then getting to hear your story, Nathan, it's like, oh, there's this is how it works, you know, on that end. And then this is how we can start to look at that for our own business, because we know that New Zealand has some really amazing things coming out of it, you know? Um, I don't know if it's that people in New Zealand, you know, it's the shed and duct tape kind of situation, um, it, making things happen, but um, New Zealand is an innovative country. I think you might both agree, all agree. Just jumping. Um, if you guys wanna, if you have anything else, maybe even like a quick tip on, on where to start if somebody was, um, what you would recommend just getting out there or what have you. Sorry, I'm just jumping. 
Okay. <laughs> I've got a question there. I've got another comment. Love these sessions. So much data. Um, I'm working, I'm like jumping from LinkedIn to Facebook to, <laughs> to YouTube. It's a bit mental. While yeah. you're doing that, um, Anna Mari, I think um, kind of towards Nathan's point earlier, really fleshing out a bit of a strategy, I think is kind of the first point of call um, that we see a lot of small businesses um, start with. Um, and that really sets you up for a bit of a framework and a bit of structure to follow when you are using tools like Market Finder to really then find that data that really, uh, I guess, proves out or validates that that opportunity for a small business. So mm. I think really the starting point is, you know, formalizing and, and coming up with that strategy um, as to where you want your business to go. What is your value prop? Who are your customers? And mm. then proving that out with something like Market Finder and the, and the tools that Pippa um, mentioned towards the end is really um, a good way, or I guess a, a good next step to mm. just validate that opportunity. Oh. Now, we have a lot of mom and pop kind of um, businesses, a lot of people who are one-man bands, you know, um, do what do you think about that in relation to global exporting, you know, um, how many you guys are, I'm sure, you know, like some successes coming from that, that small an organization, um, any kind of advice there or insight would be wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm happy to speak to that. I've definitely worked with some, you know, very small businesses and it helped them to go global over my time here working at Google. Mm -hmm. And I think the key one is to really identify like one market and do one market at a time and do it well, as opposed to trying to spread yourself too thin, trying to enter like far too many markets at once. Use one as sort of like a guinea pig. That way you're also not... Ah a lot of your budget and spreading it a little bit too thin do one prove it out and then we can go from there yeah yeah we just got a question like where are you guys from d and pippa or oh, they work for google <laughs> so, <laughs> welcome to the google um to the google is all good if you didn't know that in the beginning um it's totally fine i guess i guess i think sometimes when we come I know for myself before getting involved in Digital Boost, it's like big providers like that. You actually don't meet people from these organizations. So people go, oh, they're really actually from Google. Oh, oh wait a second. <laughs> oh, I could actually ask a question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got a question for you. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's funny. Yeah, this is Google. So do feel free to ask some questions. I think that's absolutely fabulous advice, Pippa. Like start off small, like start off something where, you know, one market, give it a little taste tester. How long would you say would you let that roll before you decided to either pull the plug on it or like attempted to go with another market? Um, I mean, I would probably recommend you have like a specific trial budget that you put against a market and then that's a specific analysis point so whatever that looks like in terms of how much you're willing to invest in that experiment and mm. then take the time like step back analyze if I mean did you drive any revenue did you drive specifically profit is the ideal right <laughs> um, and then essentially is there the opportunity to continue investing in that market or is it better to just cut your losses yeah and I actually really appreciate it when you guys, sorry. Oh, sorry, Pippa. Yeah, go ahead. See, if we're cutting losses, we're potentially not leveraging, you know, tools like Market Finder correctly in the beginning um, to really analyze, like, if it's going to be a good opportunity to move there or not or expand out there. Yeah, Nathan, think, what's your experience? Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to add to Dee's point. I couldn't agree more. I think um, definitely setting a budget or a time frame or a ceiling is, is important. I think... Um, as a marketer, like for me, what, what we like to do is um, test in those different markets, test different channels. I think understanding what channels work most effectively in those markets is key. So, you know, that could just be word of mouth, that could just be organic, or it could be paid, like different markets are so different. And, um, you know, what what works in one market um, it, from a marketing perspective doesn't necessarily work in another market. So I think it's it's also been quite ruthless in, in testing all of those things as part of that sort of initial investment and being quite ruthless and just being like, 
that one doesn't work, we'll park mm. that here and we'll really double down on the sort of channels or tactics or efforts that work the most. And I think if you are a one man band, that also is really important. You're not focusing your efforts on, on things that aren't driving that end goal, which is to this point, hopefully riffing you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just a just a follow up question um, to that. When you were talking about channels, what do you mean channels? Like, what does that mean? Yeah. So, um, I guess I'm talking like whether it's paid paid search, paid advertising, and display advertising, and it could be organic search, it could be um, referrals, it could be affiliate marketing. Like, there's you know, I'm talking all of those um, different sort of ways of of getting and. Um, yeah, getting your product to the consumer or the customer or the, the endpoint and, and and selling through those channels. There's, I have a whole list somewhere of, of all of the different channels um, to, yeah. to that point. You know, like this is a channel and um, events could quite easily be a channel for you guys. And as I said, we used to do a lot of on the ground and face-to-face interactions and, and that worked really well in the the, the pre-COVID era for us and it was really worth yeah. the investment. So I guess that's the other thing is is figuring out what your return on investment in those in those spaces are. And also understanding that these things work together. So yeah. um, it's not always and um, you know I often get challenged, well, this this particular thing's like driven no no re- revenue or return on investment. It's like, well, that's actually part of a, a bigger picture as, as a marketing strategy that, that Dee kind of touched on in that presentation. So it's, as I said, data, there's so much of it, just interpreting it in a right way and, and, and using what's valuable is, is pretty key, um, I think. Would you say, you know, we've mentioned a few times here, like um, maybe you're working with a budget or something like that to know what, where you need to pull out or, or go ahead. Um, in your experience, Nathan, and maybe in your um, expertise, uh, Dee and Pippa, would you recommend like getting an accountant involved in that? I mean, we are talking about like, you know, not all of us are great at accounting. You know, I'm not a numbers person. I know that for sure. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I think um, I think if you've got someone that understands that stuff that you can lean on, it's it's helpful. Um, you know, without getting too technical, it's um, it's it's really important to understand. I mean, D touched on cost per click in in the search sense, but you know, understanding your cost of acquisition and and like the payback period on your investment is key. And I don't expect every small business person to to understand that because it is a challenging space. So if you can lean on 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 friends or or people that have expertise in that space, and um, it's it's totally worth it. And I think generally in the industry, um people are pretty happy to have a yarn like you don't necessarily take them out for a coffee and yeah. <laughs> chat about things like yeah that that's definitely what I find works anyway um yeah no that's that's so true Nathan I'll just add on um in terms of yeah understanding a budget or could you leverage an accountant um in that respect I think it also comes down to really ruthlessly prioritizing what your test market is Mm. so you'll notice I think um Pippa took you through that market finder tool and showed you where the um key opportunities were for that particular business which was um UK Germany um and another one but often you'll see with any particular business that you um pop in the URL for the US is one of the largest markets and one of the biggest opportunities for so many businesses um but the US is massive, right? And you're not going to find the efficiency and you may not see the return if you're looking to target the whole country. So Mm -hmm. it's really about ruthlessly prioritizing and using those tools to understand where exactly is the most demand, like which Mm -hmm. state might be um, might have the most demand for my products or for for my services, Um, really targeting those. Um, That's where your customers are. So really targeting them. Um, and then using that to prove out what sort of budget you might look to use, um, what sort of return you're getting, and then looking to expand maybe to a few more states. Um, I think, yeah, there are so many, there are so many um, elements or states or um, there is a huge population in so many of these markets that do get surfaced and get recommended. Um, we can't reach all of them, but really understanding, I guess, where to start and going a little bit more um, granular or prioritizing a little bit further um, can definitely help 
uh, I guess one prove out whether there is um, an opportunity for your business and then from there where do you go how, how much return are you getting and can you expand further I love that. And I, I also just want to throw it out there to the um, DBers, as I've dubbed them, digital boosters. Um, we do have some f- fabulous, we've had some great talks. You know, uh, Nathan had mentioned that cash flow cycle and understanding kind of, you know, from acquisition of of maybe products all the way until when you get paid and making sure that there's that constant cash flow and stuff. There was a great session that we did with we accounting they also do business development stuff um they're a lovely firm and they've done some sessions on that if you're interested in learning more about budgeting and more about that aspect so that you can go and then endeavor on something like this um, reach out to us at support at digitalboost.co.nz and the support team will give you that link you can always find it as well in the in case you missed it section scroll down or just contact we accounting and they'll help you out or any of those other kind of facilities you could contact Manaki. they've got a number of about like 200 150 experts on staff and they could refer you to somebody who might be able to help you with something like that. I'm just mentioning we because I, I've had them on and I and I know that they've talked to this point, um, but there are plenty of folks out there that could help you as well. Um, we are out of time. This has been an absolutely fabulous session. It's always a thrill for me um, to have you guys on and just go a little bit deeper into the tools that Google has because I'm I'm miffed. Like it it blows my mind. Like what what you guys think about you you know to make these things happen. It's like if you thought you needed it, it already exists. That's how I feel about <laughs> things at Google. <laughs> I just don't know that it's there yet. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Our product team so. would love that feedback. <laughs> <laughs> you pass it on from the digital boosters. I speak for the whole team. Um, and everybody, no, <laughs> pass it on from me. And um, thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, everyone who joined us on different platforms. If you need any help, just let us know. Reach out. We're here to help you. Um, if you're streaming with us on another platform, I'm just going to say, and you haven't registered a digital boost, Get registered because folks like Google have passed on brilliant provider offers like Google Ads. There's a Google Ads offer. There's a PB Tech offer. There's like a lot of offers that these guys have passed on to SMEs like yourself that you can't access unless you're registered. So digitalboost.co.nz, get yourself registered. We want to help you out and help your business to thrive. Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful day. Awesome. Always a pleasure. Let's connect soon. Thank Thanks you for so having much. us. Thank you. Kakite. I always do the wrong hand. Kakite, everyone. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. I'll 